You cannot deny that every Trumpite black person you know seems to have a problem with black people. Something that Farrakhan often preached on is this need to fix black people because clearly we are a broken people here in this country and that in order to address black people's problems, we have to first be fixed. And by fix, most black conservatives almost always mean become more like white people. Farrakhan and others will say that that's not really what it's about. It's just about being respectable and more disciplined and harder working as if black people weren't always those things then and now. As if low wage working class black people of that era and today aren't the most hard working people in the country. This rhetoric about fixing black people is often referred to as a deficit philosophy towards black issues. You know, the belief that black people are broken and somehow needs to be fixed is something that is actually held by more black people than you would want to admit. And it's because it is our version of Stockholm Syndrome. It is a belief that is brought about through trauma. It is a psychological breaking of the mind through trauma. Too many of us think that if we are just more like white folks, right, that they will treat us better, that, that they will accept us and love us and treat us as equals. But that's not the way it goes. We fail to understand that racism and classism is not the same thing. So even if you gain some kind of money or dress like them or go to operas, you know what I'm saying, which I do, you know what I'm saying. The last concert I went to was a Sarah Brightman concert. I'm, I'm very uh, diverse culturally, you know what I'm saying, in that regard. But I don't expect white folks to look at me any differently just because I like Sarah Brightman and like Inya. And the... Uh, the fact that FD Signifier would use somebody like Minister Farrakhan in that example only goes to show you the, the obvious contradictory rhetoric of the more aggressive social religious organizations within the black community. This doesn't just apply to the nation Islam. This applies to the Hebrew Israelites. This applies to the Moorish Science Temple of America. And it even applies to Pan-Africanism itself like Dr. Umar Johnson. You know, all of these that I just mentioned, you know, they all come across, you know, as if they are really strongly pro-black and anti-white. Now, I know they're gonna say we're not really anti-white, and I, 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 I can accept that, right? But I'm talking about the rhetoric. The rhetoric is always the these cavemen, these devils, you know what I'm saying? These savages, just the kind of rhetoric you get from them regarding white folks, and at the flip side of that, they call us gods, you know what I'm saying? They call us kings and everything, you know? So when you got these kinds of people that come wrapped up in this, this strong, strong, aggressive form of pro-blackness that is hiding the underlining cultural ideology that you really need to be more like and like by white folks to be a good black person, you get a, you, you get a, a type of contradiction that simply cannot be reconciled. And one of the ways they do this is that they, they they invest in all of the cultural ways of white folks. You notice Farrakhan wears suits. He's always worn suits. You know, you see a lot of these Red Pill brothers on YouTube. They're wearing suits. They got all these movements out there that the black men should wear suits to change the perception of black men. And this is, this is how they do this without claiming what they're doing. Another way they do it without claiming is that they're heavily invested in education. You think about it, all of the pro-blacks that do all of the loud talking, all in pan-Africanism, all of them come through university. All of them have been indoctrinated by the white man's educational system. In fact, they get their entire pro-black pan-Africanist ideology from white folks' universities. This is where it come from. So, and, and, and academia and history, accredited history, are two of the most two of the most insulting and disrespectful uh, uh, institutions towards black Americans. And it's, it's two of the things that, that Pan-Africanists and Hebrew Israelites and all of them, they hold, they hold on to history like, like, it, like it's a life raft in the ocean, in the middle of the ocean, right? They won't let go of education. They won't let go of history. So these two things shows a, a, a fundamental contradiction in the rhetoric they spew in calling white folks devils and evil and cave people and calling us gods and kings and the first builders of civilizations and the leaders of everything. But at the same time, their entire foundational base, their entire base of their, of, of their actual ideology comes from white folks. And this is a problem. 
And this is why they look at us with a certain disdain. They look at black people with a certain hatred. Because if you don't act like white folk, something is wrong with you. If it's too black, it's wrong. And this is a mentality that we have adopted and we propagated among each other in the name of, of just trying to be respectable and trying to be righteous and trying to be better citizens. And it has nothing to do with none of that stuff. This is coonery. That's all it is. This is trying to be like your oppressor. This is trying to be like your enemy. This is bowing down to the enemy and you're making an enemy out of your own people while at the same time claiming to represent your people. You know, I've been on here keeping it real with you brothers since the beginning, trying to tell y'all about relationships and so forth. My, y all, y all, it's not my fault y'all don't want to hear it. It's not my fault that what y'all really want is somebody to hate women. But it's not my fault y'all have sunken into that place. You know what I'm saying? That you have fallen into that place. I'm not going there with you. That's why I could never have done what Kevin Samuels doing. I'm not going there. I'm not about to sit here online and bash and berate people all day. My job is to uplift you. If I know a better way, my job is to come on here and show you a better way. My job is to offer you a better way. Not to sit here and gossip and, 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 and kick women and stuff and kick, kick Pookie while he's down. Because I understand Pookie is just down, man. Pookie is suffering from the same system that you are suffering from. Y'all are just dealing with it differently. But the problem is, y'all are so busy trying to be better than the next black person that y'all never, ever look at yourself and want to be a better human being. And now we end back with these conservative coons. What y'all doing, bro, y'all have capitulated to the bullying tactics of these people. These people present power. These people present themselves as authorities. They are aggressive. They are domineering. They don't care. They are rah, They in your face. Y'all have capitulated to that energy because that's what that energy does to weak people and make them fold. It's a lot I disagree with on, on the Democrat side. That don't mean I'm about to vote for a party of racists. That don't mean I'm about to vote for the people that want to take away the disability that my brother and cousin depend on. That don't mean I want to vote for the people that's stripping away social security that, that we pay into every pay period. That don't mean I want to vote for the people that, that's more into empire building, you know what I'm saying, than, than taking care of citizens that believe that, that they should not have to take care of no citizen. I don't want to vote for people that, that got every policy, you know, is, is, is built around who it hurts rather than who it helps. I can't do that, my brothers and sisters. So if you can do that, me and you ain't the same. Like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel. I'll be back, man. You know, so until next time, I'm out here. I'm Brother Kush, a.k.a. The Black Elf Salon.